All right. Well, welcome everyone. Governor Lamont and I are so delighted to be here with the members of our Black and Puerto Rican caucus who have joined us today to celebrate this historic bill. I want to say thank you to our New London State Representative, Anthony Nolan, who was one of the original co-sponsors of the Juneteenth bill, along with our local elected officials who have supported and stewarded this bill through the 2022 legislative session. Uh, let's give Rep. Nolan a round of applause for his leadership. The governor and I are so proud to represent a state that has uh, such a strong history of abolitionist ideals. Uh, we were on the right side of history and history is right behind us. Today, um, we recognize that June 19, 1865 is known as Emancipation Day, the day that African Americans in Galveston, Texas, were told that they were free by federal soldiers for the first time, a full year after the Civil War. Juneteenth is a day that many of our citizens fully realized their true freedom, a day when they realized they were no longer three quarters, three fifths of a person. The Amistad, which is docked behind us today, is a testament to the birthright of humanity and dignity. It was here in New London, Connecticut, that falsely enslaved passengers on this ship were given their freedom. Today, we're here to recognize the trauma of our African American community and to start in a small way to correct the wrongs of our past. It's important that we seek to redress this terrible legacy of slavery, and today we're one step closer to changing the course of our history. Juneteenth is a day of joy, of collective celebration, self-determination, and perseverance, a day in which we honor those who could not see freedom and to the many others who did see freedom. So thank you all for being here to mark this very special day and bill signing and we have some very special speakers and we are going to start with the president pro tem of the council in new london the honorable riona dias so good morning um i just like to welcome first of all lieutenant governor the governor um state representatives, um, all distinguished guests, um, counselors, just here to the city of New London. And as I welcome you, I just want to share with you uh, just quickly about the fact that eight years ago, the New London NAACP started to celebrate Juneteenth Day. And this was done, and excuse me if I'm a little nervous, this was done, thank you. Um, the first year was done in honor of Juneteenth with the New London NAACP, with Connecticut Landmarks, and Ellen M. Hospital. We, so after the first year, the second year, they added OIC, and last year, Parsh. So as we look to, uh, to celebrate, this will be taking place starting tonight at 5.30 at OIC. So everybody is welcome. We will continue um, to celebrate or to acknowledge Juneteenth Day and honor it tomorrow from 11 to 4 p.m. And all is welcome. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone understand um, that we celebrate at OIC because that is the historical black district in our neighborhood. See, that neighborhood, the houses was built by free men. And it's important to know that. And it's important to come down. But I am so thankful that you guys came down today. And as the official um, welcomer today, as President Pro Temp of the City Council of New London, I like to say all is welcome. And I hope you enjoyed the day. And thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. 
Madam President Pro Tem, thank you so much for the welcome on behalf of uh, the City of New London. It's now my pleasure to introduce State Representative Anthony Nolan, who's going to introduce all of our distinguished legislators. I think we have about half of our legislature here. <laughs> and uh, then he will bring up Olivia Campbell, who is a member of the Connecticut Kid Governor Cabinet. Anthony Nolan. Good morning, good morning. It is so great to see everybody here today for this extremely important uh, time of a uh, bill signing for Juneteenth. So I'm going to look around so I can make sure that I catch everybody's name. But I want to first thank Robin Porter for being here. State Representative Porter. <laughs> Jerry Reyes is the uh, chair of the Black and Puerto Rican Caucus. State Representative State Representative Delaney, I believe I saw. State Representative Thomas. State Representative Connolly is here. Senator Formica is here. I see, uh, let's see, Senator Flexer, who was a partner in putting this bill forward in the uh, session this year. Thank you so much, uh, Senator Flexer. And uh, how you doing? Representative Ryan. Representative Ryan. I say the best for last, see? That, that, that is my, my, my best friend up there. We always go back and forth at one another. And uh, Representative McGee is on her way, I, I believe. Um, and I also just want to recognize Eric here. Uh, thank you, Eric, for coming. Uh, our, our other counselors. Um, uh, James Burke and Councillor Peck are here. Um, Andre Bumgarner from Groton, I see, is here. Danny Cruz is from the Board of Ed. Yes. Thank you, Danny, for being here. And I just want to make sure I didn't forget anybody. Because I don't want nobody talking about me. All right. I'd also like to thank the administration from New London for being here, Steve Fields. Tommy Majors, uh, Felix Reyes, Mr. Red for parking, and our chief of the fire department is here. Thank you so much for being here. So as we know, the importance of this day, um, where the governor is going to sign the bill, uh, was something that we fought hard for in the legislation this year. Um, we did have a little back and forth in regards to it, but we were able to uh, express our concerns and the importance of why we believe that it is necessary for us to have this day as a holiday. Um, it's been something that we've been waiting for and trying to get for a long time. So I might have been in the uh, mix of putting this bill forward, but I am not the only one who has done this. And I could never take claim for something that I didn't start. Um, I just was able to help push it forward. Um, and, you know, some of our representatives that aren't here before us, uh, like Tony Walker and uh, uh, Senator Gary Winfield, um, Robin Porter, um, and the, the list goes on and on. And they uh, were the ones, along with um, myself, uh, that uh, helped do this. Um, we know that um, this is just the first step and that we need to even do more. Uh, especially with uh, the inequality uh, that we have with our education and our, with our health care. Come up, uh, State Representative McGee. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew um, how important this was. And we're just real grateful for you guys being here uh, to help us uh, send this off, um, especially Lieutenant Governor um, and the Governor, who are hard workers, and they help make us be able to put New London on the map um, and just as another uh, notch uh, that we can click off um, to go along with our great, uh, if you look over there, you can see our great project going on in state pier. Um, but I want to thank everybody for being here. Now, my next special speaker um, is part of the Connecticut Kid Governor uh, you know, and, and she is just an amazing person. 
I couldn't do this without her because she is my partner in the legislation and my partner as far as being an official in New London, because I do consider her an official for New London, Absolutely. being on the right. cabinet for the kid governor. Um, Olivia Campbell is here, and she's going to speak a little bit. Um, so please give her the best response. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you for being here, Liv. Hi. Hi, my name is Olivia Campbell, and I am a 2022 Connecticut kid governor cabinet member and a representative of Southeastern Connecticut and the proud city of New London. I am honored to say a few words about Juneteenth. Most young people around my age are familiar with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day and Black History Month, but may be unfamiliar with Juneteenth. Today, we are here to honor a rich tradition in black history, which officially became a federal holiday last year. Juneteenth is a holiday celebrating the end of slavery in the United States and today is becoming a state recognized holiday. The Emancipation Proclamation was issued on January 1st, 1863 by former President Abraham Lincoln. However, it took another two whole years for news to travel to Galveston, Texas around June 19th. The name Juneteenth is a blend of two words, June and 19th. It is believed to be the oldest African-American holiday with annual celebrations on June 19th in different parts of the country dating back to 1866. It is imperative that my generation recognize the significance of this day and realize that it is much more than a day off it is set aside to commemorate the freedom of African-American people. I, for one, am proud to share the importance of Juneteenth with you. Thank you to Governor Ned Lamont and Representative Anthony Nolan for allowing me to partake in such a momentous occasion. That's why I let her go after me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Olivia Campbell. We appreciate that. And now we're going to bring up Ms. Sarah Cheney, uh, who is a historian. Sarah, please come right up. Thank you very much. Greetings to Governor Lamont, the Mayor, distinguished guests, and all in attendance. I would like to speak today on being grateful to all who had something to do with establishing this as a final holiday for the state of Connecticut. My grandmother was born to freed slaves. She was born seven years after the Emancipation Proclamation. She died here in New London in 1968. She was a wonderful woman, and I am the woman today because of her training, as she would put it. You know, I thank you all for being here. I thank you all for participating in this great event, and I thank too the Norwich NAACP for having their hand in it years before we did celebrate it here in New London. But thank you all for that. And I had a whole speech, but it isn't necessary because we all know why we're here and we all know that we have to continue on. But I do ask going forward that legislators look forward, look to the future and teach our American children the meaning of holidays. Holidays do not fall on the day that they actually occur. So when you have President's Day, you should know what it's about. When you have Juneteenth Day, you should know what it's about and the reason for that holiday. Thank you all. And I know if we all work together, we have, we'll have a better community, a better state, a better world if we work together and we learn that differences don't make us different. It unites us because you wouldn't want to walk down the street and look at everybody that looks like you. We want to be different. We want to encourage differences and we want to know about the differences and we need to know 
about each other's heritage. So thank you all. Thank you. Ms. Sarah Cheney, thank you so much. And now I, I thought I saw this gentleman arrive, Mr. Lonnie Braxton. Great right, seeing you. <clears throat> uh, good morning. And uh, it's on its way to afternoon. And I just had an experience with the growth of New London traffic. Uh, I really want to thank everybody for the wonderful privilege and opportunity to address you on this most historic of days. First, we extend our heartfelt thanks and appreciation to all of those in our state legislature and government who voted yes for Public Act 22-128, May 27, 2022, thereby making Juneteenth Day a Connecticut state holiday. Let's have a round of applause also with a special thanks to Representative Anthony Nolan. Not only for his service, but for all the hard extra work in making this day possible. And a personal thanks from me for his most generous and humbling call, asking me to say a few words here about the history of Juneteenth. And that humbling call, he uh, stopped me and said, Braxton, I want you to say a few words about the history. But you know the governor is speaking and he's got a lot to do, so don't hold him up. You've seen those ads on TV. So I'm not gonna hold the governor up. I have three minutes, so here it goes. In the spring, right after the Civil War ended, our newly freed woman, Julie Tilroy, with only the clothes on her back and her two little children in tow, she walked over a hundred miles to Atlanta looking for her brother and his family. And after being there, uh, there was an organization she encountered was known as the Freeman's Bureau. And it was recreated by the government to assist newly freed people with securing housing, jobs, education, and locating lost family members. And you know, as I reflect back on this, I should make sure we understand it, it touches us still today. Because in Hebron, Connecticut, there was a woman born, and her name was Josephine Sophie White Griffin, with a G, who was instrumental in the creation of this Freeman's Bureau. And she personally found homes for over 7,500 freed people. And she, but for the fact she was a woman, she would have been head of that Freeman's Bureau. Oh, now, now, this bureau was staffed mostly by missionary workers. And one of these missionary workers was a young woman from the North, white female, and she's toiling day after day helping these people. And she was getting frustrated seeing all the destitution and mm. lack of everything with these people around her, that she was becoming frustrated. And so when she got a chance to interview Ms. Tillaroy, she blurted out of her frustration a question. She said, and this question is, that had been burning, why would you want to leave the certainties and comfort of your master's plantation where a subsistence was guaranteed for the uncertainties before you? And without a pause of missing of a beat, Ms. Tilroy said, to joy my freedom to enjoy my freedom. That today would be said to enjoy my freedom. And today we can all enjoy our freedom. Freedom, freedom that came at last when on June 19, 1865, it was said that Major General Gordon Granger read these words in downtown Galveston, Texas from the balcony of the Orsman Building, freeing 2,500 I'm sorry, 250,000 enslaved people in Texas. And we should note, the reason the numbers were going up was because people were fleeing my home state of Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, taking their slaves to Texas because Texas was so big and ignored the rule. And so we should please also note that this reading came some two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation became the law of the land on January 1, 1863. 
Now I quote General Granger's general order number three. The people of Texas are informed that in accordance with the proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between former master and slave. And the connection here to four existing between them becomes that between employer and hired labor. The freemen are advised to remain at their present homes and work for wages. They inform that they will not be allowed to collect at military posts and they will not be supported in idleness either there or elsewhere. In 1866, Freeman in Texas organized the first what became the annual celebration of Jubilee Day. And when I was a child in Mississippi, my grandparents always referred to it as Jubilee Day. In the ensuing decades, Juneteenth celebrations featured music, concerts, barbecues, prayer services, and other activities. And as black people migrated from Texas to other parts of the country, the Juneteenth celebration spread not only nationwide, but worldwide, there are now Juneteenth celebrations in a number of other countries. But it is because of these 93 words recited at, Galveston, at several Galveston locations on that fateful day in June uh, over 156 years ago that we are here today as witnesses to the signing into law Public Act 22-128 by Ned Lamont, the governor of the state of Connecticut, making Juneteenth not only the longest running celebrated African-American holiday, but also a state of Connecticut holiday. It should not pass unnoticed that on June 17, 2017, Juneteenth officially became a federal holiday as well. My time's up. I gotta go. Thanks. Thank you so much, Lonnie Braxton. Uh, I should have noted that you are a former prosecutor, but I think everybody already got that point from your speech. So now it's my pleasure to bring up State Representative Jerry Reyes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Good morning, everybody. It's an honor and privilege being here in New London, beautiful seaport town, representing the BPRC. I have the privilege of being the chair of the most prestigious caucus in the state of Connecticut. This wouldn't have gotten done without the BPRC's leadership. Representative Nolan's already mentioned many of the colleagues that led the charge long before I even uh, stepped foot into the Capitol. It's just a privilege to be here, a part of history. And I will leave with this. Part of the African-American, Puerto Rican, and Latino bill was so important for days just like this that in the state of Connecticut, we had to actually make it a point of legislation to actually recognize something that 49 states have already recognized as being Juneteenth. And I believe that this is the, the information and the type of, uh, of uh, ideology that we should be teaching kids from their little because everything isn't as it is in the history books that I had to learn from. And this is why I think the Juneteenth holiday is so important for the state of Connecticut. And I am just honored to be here in the presence of such great legislators and under the leadership of Governor Lamont and Susan Bisewitz. So thank you very much on behalf of the BPRC and the Connecticut delegation. Thank you so much, Representative Reyes. It's now my pleasure to bring up a leader of the Norwich area NAACP, Ms. Sheila Hayes. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. And I'd like to thank Governor Lamont, Lieutenant Governor Bicewitz, as well as our state senators and state representatives. This is a glorious day, and you don't really know how glorious it is for Norwich. I'm going to give you a brief history, because I would be remiss if I did not talk about our former president, Jacqueline Owens. She originally, she originally hailed from Iowa when she became branch president in, um, in 1987. Around 1988, she started talking to us about Juneteenth, and none of us in the area knew. And I'll say no one across the state had really known about Juneteenth. We started 33 years ago 
the first celebration, the first commemorative celebration. Lieutenant Governor, I'd like to recognize her. She joined us in Norwich. She has been she has been a part of this effort for 33, 33 years, as well as Congressman Courtney, not quite 33 years, but we worked with him to help get the federal legislation, and now we have the state legislation. This is a glorious day. This is our history. Um, we need to own it, but we need to make sure that we ensure that the correct history is taught to our children and all the children in the school system. Um, so I just cannot thank you, Representative Nolan, Porter, and all of those, and my own state representative, Kevin Ryan, um, for being a part of this most glorious day where we celebrate our freedom and our jubilation. And I just want to thank everyone for in attendance. Nicely done. Sheila, thank you so much. And now our final speaker before the bill signing will be our amazing governor, Ned Lamont. So, Anthony, I think Juneteenth is more than a holiday. Uh, it's a holiday where we got to remember what it means. And it's a learning opportunity. I think, uh, Sarah, you said that pretty well. Um, so do you, Mr. Cheney. <laughs> Women named Cheney have done this country proud the last 24 hours, yeah, from my point sure. of view. It's spelled a little different, but same. Look, this country was founded on important ideals, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And every day we have to strive to fulfill those ideals in order to form a more perfect union. And life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness left out a vast majority of Americans and left out our slaves, which is a stain upon our history. And somebody named George Santayana, I think, said, you know, if you don't learn from your past, you're bound to repeat those mistakes. You're bound to repeat those mistakes. And slavery was not just a mistake. But it reminds me of those that, you know, want to airbrush our history. Uh, are, it's dangerous if you're not willing to learn from our past. And I think that's what Juneteenth is all about. Look, we're here. We've had a number of Emancipation Days. I, I thought the Constitution was an Emancipation Day. It wasn't quite. Uh, I thought Amistad, right here, was important in terms of a symbol. And what that meant when um, those folks who were being over here sold into slavery were coming in and they, they, they took over the Amistad uh, right off of Montauk Point, I think you said, and uh, came to New Haven and were welcomed by abolitionists who said, um, you're free men. And they tried here in Connecticut, tried down at the Supreme Court. You know who uh, represented uh, the would-be slaves from the Amistad, John Quincy Adams, whose uh, dad was there at the founding of the nation. It just reminds you, it's a continuum as we struggle towards progress. One of the most important weeks in the history of our country, I believe, was that week in April of 1865. that started with uh, Robert E. Lee's surrender at Appomattox, and in less than a week, uh, Abraham Lincoln, calling for reconciliation, was assassinated. And we thought maybe the end of the Civil War was um, our Emancipation Day. Well, Juneteenth reminds us that it's a continuing struggle, I think, Anthony. It reminds us that the war didn't stop. Obviously, it went on to Texas. The communication was pretty slow. They didn't know what was going on. And then finally, uh, they found the war was over. But that was not quite Emancipation Day either. Um, we had the Emancipation Proclamation. That only freed the slaves in the, uh, in the rebel states. So then we had uh, the 14th Amendment and slaves across the country were freed. And that was Emancipation Day. But it wasn't because then we had Jim Crow. And then we had the Civil Rights Movement. And every day is a struggle. And every day is a struggle for our country to form a more perfect union where everybody is welcome and everybody has the opportunity to live up to their highest ideals and dreams. I'd like to think that Connecticut has played a real role there. I'd like to think going from Amistad to uh, Martin Luther King when he was uh, working 
uh, in a field in, in Simsbury and what that meant to him in terms of what a more welcoming uh, state and region and country could be. And so for me, I'm proud to celebrate Juneteenth as a holiday, and I'm more proud to make sure that we make sure it's a learning day. We remember that every day in this country, we strive to form a more perfect union. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Governor. And please join me with a round of applause for the staff of the Amistad for bringing this beautiful ship here for this backdrop. We're so grateful to them. And now let's sign the bill, Gov. to Ms. Robin Porter. Thank you very much. That's right. All right. Okay. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. <laughs> Make sure we, yeah. yes. Okay. Are these all signed? Did you get an empty one? Then Olivia. No, you don't. Okay. Okay. Olivia, these rest are signed. Oh. So, uh, Olivia, you got one. Uh, Ms. Sheila Hayes. Uh, Mr. Kalani Braxton. Um, okay. Ray Ray Jerry, Ray 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 Jerry Reyes gets one. Um, yes, Roy Chenay. Okay. And Rep Barnes, Senator Flexer, you need one. And your assistant Rose will share with you. Okay. And Formica. We're going to give that. Uh, who else? Stephanie, State Representative Simon. Stephanie Thomas. Yes, indeed. Ryan, Ryan. Ryan, Rip Ryan. And then you have the Director of the Amistad. Uh, one for the Director of the Amistad. Amen. Okay, Rep Connolly. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Make sure there's enough for everyone. Yes. Who else would like one? Can I get one for the mayor? Oh, you may have one for the mayor. And Riona Dias, where did she go? I'm right here. Okay, excellent. She's got that. Okay. The history of Amistad like nobody else. Okay. There you are. And you may take one for the Norwich delegation. Excellent. And we still have some. Anybody else? Okay, you take an extra one. Okay. I'm going to give one to Andre Baumgartner. And you may have one as well. And I think. Absolutely. These other ones were used to sign, so there we go. Okay, HRO, you got one. Um, you can, 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 you